Hi everyone, welcome to the 10th video of module 6. Here we are going to create two functions. First to load the model, that is the pickle pile. And then to use that loaded model to make some predictions. And once the functions are created, we are also going to test it right in this video. So yeah, let's get started. Now the time has come ladies and gentlemen that we start coding our final project. That is to develop the start type API. For that you will be requiring this initial setup. So make sure that you are ready with the setup and then we can get started with it. So the first step would be to create another file, call it as predictor.py. Inside this file, we'll be having two main functions. The first one is to load the train model. The second one would be to make predictions based on this loaded model. Now to load the train model, I'll be requiring pickle. So I'll import pickle. And I'll create a function to load this model which is nothing but the pipeline that we had downloaded from our previous video. So define a function and call it as let's say load model. It's going to take the path of this model. So I'll call it as model path. And the way that we're going to load this whole model will be exactly in the same way that I had shown you in the Google Collaborator notebook. So for that, I'll be having with open. I'll open this file in the read byte format and I'm going to pass in this model path over here and open it, reference it with this F, use my pickle over here and load this file. So this is going to return our pipeline that we had downloaded from our previous video. So this is something that I want to return as the output for this function. And now it's time to test it up. So I'm going to print or let's say I'll just first of all have this model loaded by passing the path that is model.pkl because we are in the same directory. So yeah, that's going to be the path that I'm going to pass in. And simply I'll print this model and see what is the output. So as you can see that we are having this pipeline with both the methods that we had stored. Now it would be the time to go ahead and make predictions based on this loaded model. So for this, I'll just skip this part and define a new function over here for making predictions. First of all, it's going to take this loaded model. At the same time, it's going to take in some input features list. Okay, You can just skip calling it as list over here. You can use the doc strings to define that it's a list of this input features of your star type data. And over here, because I'll be having this input features, I'll also define it over here. These are nothing but the input of the star properties that I'll be passing as an input as in for this API. And the response of this API would be the output of that class that your model is going to predict based on this inputs. So just for the testing purpose for now, I'll be having the temperature value as 2637. So it's because it's a list, so I'll have 2637 over here. After this, I am having luminosity as 0 0.00073. So 0 0.00073. After that, I'm having radius that is 0 0.127. 0 0.127. And lastly, we are having absolute magnitude as 17.22. So yeah, that's our absolute magnitude. We are all set. Now there's one thing you need to keep in mind that there are four different inputs that I'm passing over here for one row. So I'll just encapsulate it inside this list. That's going to make sure that this is one row of data. And this row is having four different columns, temperature, luminosity, then radius and the absolute magnitude. So that's how I'm creating this input features over here. And let's see that how we can define this make predictions. So the first thing I would like to do is to start predict what will be the output based on this input that I'll be passing. So for that, I'll just call it as predict class. It's equal to this loaded model dot predict. And it's going to predict based on this input features. And I'm going to return this predict class. And I'll be testing this by doing print make predictions. I'll be passing in this input features and the model. 
and that's it. It's going to predict brown dwarf as you can see over here. So if I run this code, if everything is fine, we should get brown dwarf as the output and that's something that we get. Now because it's in the format of list, I really want to give output not exactly in the format of the list but just the brown dwarf as a string. So for that I just have a zero over here that is getting access of the zeroth element that is the brown dwarf. So if I run this code, uh, now you will be able to see that brown dwarf is the output. Now we are having this kind of a warning because of um, the way that we had saved this pipeline. No problem if you just want to suppress this warning. You can import warnings and over here you are going to say that warnings dot filter warnings simply ignore. And now if I run this code again. Uh, now you can see that there are no warnings anymore. So we are all set over here, right? So after having this output of the predicted class, I really want two more things. First one is that what is the probability of all of the class that my model is going to predict? So for that, I'll be using the functionality of the scalar that is predict proba that's going to help us get the probabilities. So for that, I'll be having this probabilities probabilities I hope the spelling is correct and over here I'm going to say model dot predict proba and input features and uh, let's say I'm also going to written this predictions out or I would say probabilities probabilities and over here I'll again run this code So this time we are having brown dwarf as the first output and the second output is array of the predicted probabilities for each and every class. So let's see what are all the respective classes names that we have over here. For that I'll have to do classes is equal to model dot classes and that's it. I can just print that out over here by using it in a written for this make predictions, I'll run this code. So the first one is belonging to the brown dwarf and as you can see this is the maximum value that we are getting over here. So it makes sense that this is the one and red dwarf should be the second highest as we had seen from our python notebook, right? So over here as we can see that this one is the second largest, it's the last third element. So over here, this is white dwarf, super giant and red dwarf. So it makes sense that everything is in line. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to delete this part because everything is working fine the way we want. And I'll also delete this part over here because this idea of this file is to just have these two functions that are ready for us over here. So that in the next file that we'll be creating, we can simply import these two functionalities from this file. Okay, and that other file that I'm going to show you would be the API that I'm going to create with the help of past API. All right, guys, so that's the end of this video over here. And now in the next video, you're going to see that the predator.py file that we have created over here, how we can just quickly refactor it. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.